Good afternoon. I think as the weather gets nicer, we might want to move this, uh, like class, we should move this outside. And uh, everybody, oh, wow, everybody's, wow, all right. I will, uh, wow, I didn't think that'd be so easily accepted. Without objection, uh, so ordered, and uh, I will have, uh, I will have, uh, I'll have uh, Waka start setting that up. That sounds like a great idea. Wow. That sounds, uh, that sounds good. Mr. Fellow, thank you, sir. Now that we've uh, gone, to, now that we've now that we've broken all the news. Let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, move forward. Go ahead. On healthcare, a few questions. Does the president support the idea of the House passing the health care bill without actually ever voting on it? Well, uh, Ben, I think as you've heard the president discuss uh, repeatedly uh, over these past couple of weeks. Um, this week there will be a final vote on health care. There will be uh, an up or down vote on, uh, on where we are on health care, on the President's plan um, to reform our health care system. And uh, I think that is, uh, that's, that's what he's focused on. That's, what, that's why he's talking to members uh, to gain their support for. But there's a scenario unfolding in which the House would vote on the, the fix-it bill, as you know, mm -hmm. but, but never actually vote on the underlying Senate bill and the House Speaker has been has been candid about that. If that happens, would the President be okay with that? Well, again, uh, Ben, I, I uh, there's going to be a vote on health care reform this week. You're going to know where people are on health care reform. Um, there, are, I'm sure, those that are going to want to make this about the legislative process uh, rather than the heart wrenching stories of people like Natoma Canfield that the President discussed yesterday. Um, but the vote that we have on health care this week, and, and I, I'm not under the impression that the House has made up its mind on right. what that process is going to be. I haven't read it. But I don't think there's any doubt that people, th this will be a final vote on health care. You'll know where health care is. Well, the President, and along with policy, has said that process is important to the American people, transparency. So when you say a vote, <laughs> I, I think, don't you think it's important but that there be a vote on, on yeah. the bill? Well, again, I don't think anybody's going to be missing. I don't think anybody's going to misinterpret the outcome as to where people are on health care. I anticipate I'll get questions today on who the president is speaking with and who's he meeting with, and you're going to ask me, right? But right, but 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 why? And and you want to and you want to know that? Hold on, let me finish my point. And you're going to want to know where they are on health care. When you do your whip counts, you're trying to figure out who's where on health care. I don't imagine there's many Republican strategists that you all will interview this week that will say, we won't look at the vote that's going to be had on Friday or so, and it's not about health care. So again, the president is focused on, uh, after having worked on this for a year, getting this done, uh, focusing on the stories that he repeated yesterday uh, outside of Cleveland. Uh, on behalf of people like Natoma Canfield, uh, and believes that the stakes are higher than the next election or somebody's uh, poll numbers next week. So just to follow, who, who's the president meeting with and speaking with? Uh, Since you brought it up. Undecided members of Congress uh, who will vote later this week on health care reform. And what is he, just to follow up on that, when he does meet with lawmakers, particularly one-on-one, -on -one, what, what is he offering them? in exchange for the votes of Offering the case for why health care reform uh, should be passed this year. Uh, offering the case of why 60% of small businesses will receive a tax cut in helping provide their employees with health care. Uh, offering the case for why uh, the mother of a young child won't sit on the phone anymore with an insurance company arguing about a so-called pre-existing condition. Uh, those are the types of uh, uh, anecdotes that the president will be offering uh, members of Congress uh, about why it's important to put aside the day-to-day -day politics, put aside the next election, put aside your poll numbers, and instead focus on the problems that the American people have. So you're saying he's just making that he's making case that for the case. bill, no, no quid pro quo? No. Yes. Uh, let me get around. We'll, we'll be here for a while, I presume. I'd like to move to, to China. Mm -hmm. uh, if the administration has any 
reaction to the bill that's being uh, put to, to the Senate uh, by uh, Schumer and uh, Graham? I don't know that we've seen the, the text of the legislation. I think you saw the president mention just a few days ago uh, that he wished and hoped that uh, China approach their currency uh, using a more market-based interpretation. Uh, and I would point you to uh, to the Treasury for any further announcements but, on that. But is there, and there does seem to be rising rhetoric here. I mean, is the President concerned that this could undermine efforts to get China to collaborate in the G20 or even escalate into a trade war? No, I, I, I think the President, as I've said before, believes that uh, diplomatic relationships uh, sometimes come with disagreement. We've, we've been reading about a few recently. Um, but that doesn't uh, uh, that doesn't uh, curtail our ability to work on problems of mutual concern like the global economic recovery. But does the president still believe, as he said in the campaign, that China does manipulate its currency? Well, I, I, again, I'd refer you to what the president said just a few days ago. Ed. Thanks, Robert. I just want to push a little bit on this up or down vote. I mean, just again yesterday, the president said, quote, so look, Ohio, that's the proposal, and I believe Congress owes the American people a final up or down vote. He didn't say a final up or down vote plus demon, you know, using a demon pass procedure. He's promising the American people repeatedly in the last couple of weeks, including in the East Room with the doctors uh, in the white coats, a, a straight, straight up or down vote. Why are you not being clear with the American people about what you want the House to do? Ed, uh, we're being clear. We're being clear with the, with the people of the United States and with Congress that there's going to be a vote this week and you're going to know how people are where they stand on health care. But it may not be a vote on the actual legislation. Again, th th but this, I think, is a, a, a legislative <laughs> process game that, that people play. Again, let me, let me just, no, no, process. let me Why just. Why Democrats go on the record but, about but this Let me just make this point. I'm sure that CNN is going to be filled with stories between now and when that vote happens about where people are on that vote. You're asking people where they are on health care reform. You're trying to get, you're trying to get, Find out what meetings are happening here so you can ask people where they are in health care reform. That, that's what this vote's going to be about. That, that's, that's, you're going to know where people are on health care reform and where they are on the president's proposal on health care reform, not on where they are on a rule. Sure, but it's sure. also fund that part is true, leading up to the vote. Right. But it's been a fundamental part of this republic that basically at the end of a long debate well, like this, first there is foremost, an up or down vote. And, let, and the American no, people know what people are doing. Let's understand this is a... Uh, again, I'm not under the impression the House has made a final decision. That, that announcement and decision, well, no, because I'm not the Speaker of the House. Uh, she'll make that announcement. Uh, she'll make that decision. But understand, Ed, again, we, we, we hear the same process arguments from the same people that used very similar arguments on their side of this in many previous Congresses. So again, it's a little bit like reconciliation. I was against it before I was for it, and now you point out that it's, it's, but if the it's a... the weight of your arguments are so much on the right side of history, why not just go before the American people and say, here's again, an up or down vote I, on I legislation? Don't, I don't think you're going to... I don't think when you go out into the public next week after the legislation passes and ask people how, how they feel about their congressman's vote, you're going to be asking them how they feel about their... Uh, uh, congressman or congresswoman's vote on health care reform. That's that's what you're going to be asking them because that's what this vote's about. Yes, Robert, without getting into specific numbers, can you tell us what percentage of the president's day he's actually devoting to making these calls and what kind of a reception he's getting? I mean, is he getting a lot of pushback? Are these long conversations? Are they short? What, what are the nature of these calls? Uh, longer with some than others. Uh, uh, pardon me? Uh, as opposed to... Uh, <laughs> Other other words? No. Uh, uh, this is a, this is children approved programming, Helen. Let's be good. Um, uh, I have not gotten a list of uh, members that he's called today, uh, but I know he reached out. Well, obviously, he talked with uh, uh, Representative Kucinich yesterday on uh, on Air Force One. Uh, he's talked with and called either met with or called uh, members. Uh, over the past several days, and, and again, made the case for why reform is important now, why, uh, uh, why this has to be the time where we uh, finally do something about health care. How is that argument being <coughs> received? Uh, I, 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 think, uh, I think we are making, making uh, steady progress uh, toward passage of the bill this week. Do you think that this is his entire day is voted, devoted to making these calls? Is it half the day? I mean, 
No, I, 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 I'd have to go back and look at his at the the in depth schedule to give you a, uh, an educated guess on percentage. But uh, no, the I mean, look, the president again, uh, you know, has a, a a PDB every day. We had a senior advisors meeting, uh, and he's got stuff uh, later today that doesn't uh, deal with healthcare. Yes, ma'am. Has the president considered pulling out of these? Horrible wars where innocent people are killed and take care of the desperate needs in this country on the, in the cities for health, education, and welfare. Well, Helen, obviously, uh, relating to Iraq, we have, uh, we're on a path to getting our combat troops out of there by the end of August. Uh, you've seen um, in both Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, we obviously are. Um, we, uh, we, we have apologized on numerous occasions for the loss of innocent life. Is that human life? No, uh, it, it certainly doesn't. Uh, uh, the, those are the type of actions that, uh, that you obviously regret. I think that you've seen Ambassador Eikenberry and, and General McChrystal uh, say those exact things uh, to, to civilians in, in Afghanistan. Uh, but I would say that we would not be in Afghanistan if the president didn't think it was in uh, our strong national interest to do so. As it relates to the other part of your question, I think the president has uh, uh, outlined a robust agenda for uh, improving uh, health care reform in this country, or improving health care in this country for, uh, uh, I think we've laid out many ways to improve our educational system and make our children more competitive and, and ready for either a career or college at the end of high school, uh, and uh, to address other problems that uh, the president no believes has been necked for quite no some money. time. Well, again, we've made some some tough decisions about how to pay for health care reform, uh, different than has been done in the, in the uh, last few years in Washington. Uh, we believe there are priorities that the president should pay for, and we have. Chip. Thank you, Robert. Um, you talked earlier about what the president is offering people when he makes these calls. Is he offering to campaign in their districts and to uh, come out and raise money for them? Uh, I, the president is is focused on uh, the case that he will make and the case that he hopes everyone makes on why this legislation is uh, important for the American people, important for uh, the constituents of their district. But there have been numerous reports that he and or the White House have made specific offers to campaign and raise money for well, favoring Democrats. Are well, those reports I, th there's incorrect? also been reports that we won't campaign for people that don't, which uh, right. are, are also, those, those are incorrect. The, so the, the president has not made any. any I, I've not been in every meeting, Chip. Uh, again, I, the president is focused on uh, outlining the merits uh, on behalf of the legislation and the policy that again will cut costs for the American people, make health care more affordable. I understand uh, he's focused and, on that. Yeah. Is he also at the end of the call saying, hey, I'll campaign for you, I'll well, raise money for you? I, I assume we'll campaign for many people. Some will vote for it and some will vote against it. Uh, the president doesn't spend his time uh, doing scheduling and political events. Is there a quid pro quo? No, I said that but earlier to Ben that that was not the case. Not a nope. And he's not going to make campaigning or raising money contingent he is, upon uh, He is vote. focused on. Uh, he's focused on the legislation at hand. You said uh, Speaker Pelosi will make the decision or will announce the decision uh, on how the House proceeds procedurally on this. Is the President involved in any way in making that decision? Not that I'm aware of. No. And it, are people in the White House involved in making that decision? In <coughs> I, I assume that uh, we have been involved for many, many months on uh, on getting health care done. I, I, I don't know of all the conversations, whether they've weighed in on process. The final decision is hers, though, not the White House? Yeah, I think the final decision is speakers. Okay. Uh, finally, on the special deals, uh, last week, one day, you went through the different states where mm -hmm. there had been special deals, uh, Nebraska and Louisiana and mm -hmm. Vermont and Montana. Do you stand by the list of uh, deals that were taken out of of the uh, legislation uh, last week? I, I, the, I, I'm happy to look at it again. I don't have any reason to, to, to believe that. Is I, the president still change. fighting to keep those special deals uh, out of this? I, I think <coughs> we've, we've taken quite a bit out of there uh, and have asked uh, uh, the Senate to take anything else out that, again, I think as you saw people outline, would benefit uh, 
uh, one place uh, or one state rather than uh, something that can be that can affect a broader group of people. Montana, for example, does I, the president support keeping that in? I, I think I addressed that uh, last week on that. Great, right. right. you stand by it now. I do. Still. Do you believe this demon pass scenario constitutes an up or down vote? I think that I think that you're going to ask people how they stand on health care. You're not going to ask them how they stand on demon pass. You're going to have a vote count that constructs not the process for the rule, but where you are on health care. But you guys would be satisfied, <coughs> since you've extolled the virtues of an un up or down vote, you would be satisfied with this demon pass scenario. I think this is, I, I think that, again I, 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 again, I think there are many that would want to conflate this process into something that's different than the product, that is different than the heart-wrenching stories of people, as I've said, like Natoma Canfield, that, um, who made decisions to give up her, who made a decision to give up her health care, uh, to keep her house, a gamble that she's lost. I ask about the up or down vote because Speaker Pelosi said, and quoting, I like it, this scenario, because people don't have to vote on the Senate bill. I, yeah, I would ask one of her, I would ask concept. one of her capable spokespeople uh, on the, uh, on what she had to say. Okay, but wait, oh, all right, so, but did you, would you agree that there seems to be some inconsistency between what she said and the notion of an up or down vote? Okay, then real quickly, just do you, do you, would you agree that it exacerbates the perception that no. this is a dirty or underhanded process? No. Yep. Thank you, Robert. There's been some reporting today that the Israelis are considering even more settlement activity uh, after their announcement during the Vice President's trip there last week. What is the reaction? of the Obama administration to this latest increase in settlement activity? Th these are reports of. I, I don't want to base uh, my comments off of uh, would-be reports of. Uh, I'm certainly happy to comment at some point based on, uh, uh, on whether or not the reports of uh, are actual. I, I would say this. Uh, I, I think that um, Last week, the, the vice president, last week the vice president uh, uh, was in Israel to reaffirm our unwavering commitment to the security of Israel and its people. Uh, mature, as I said earlier, mature bilateral relationships can have disagreements, uh, and this is one of those disagreements. It it does not uh, it does not break the unbreakable bond that we have with the Israeli government and with the Israeli people on their security. Uh, I, I, we, have, we have, throughout this process, hoped to um, engender the type of trust between the two sides that would lead to sitting down and discussing directly these issues. Uh, events on either side that uh, complicate that, uh, we condemn on either side. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll continue to do that. Can I follow that? Uh, I'll uh, come you, back on Chuck. The president um, has said that the problem with the politics of the health care bill is not with policy, but with the process. So what is the difference between uh, a demon pass or a uh, or or a, a self-enacting rule and the kind of process that the president was condemning when he made those statements? Uh, I, I, I think we were. I think the president was talking about uh, uh, the end of the Senate bill uh, on some of the deals that uh, Chip asked me about that are gone. So the deals are different from the final announcement. Well, again, Jonathan, this is a, a process that has been used. Uh, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm struck by the richness with which uh, people can pivot to uh, believing what they were used uh, four out of ten times in a previous Congress to pass things. Uh, now have great objections to well, using so. A higher standard. And, and the fact no, no, is, I'm not holding. I'm not changing the standard. We're holding ourselves to. I'm pointing out the, quite honestly, low standards with which many of the people that you're asking me about have quoted or have saying. Uh, when Republicans use these types of rules four out of ten times in a previous Congress and then vociferously object to the use of that rule now. I, I think that is, I think that is, uh, no, again, the standard is to 
<laughs> embrace something and then find it objectionable, uh, a pivot that requires uh, something few figure skaters in the Olympics are able to pull but is, the, is this the first, is this the most significant social policy legislation to pass in 30 years or is this just another run of the mill bill uh, going through a process that, like, that has been used? Well that's a quantitatively different argument I would assume you're making now, well, right? But, I mean, you so you're saying it that it's, you can't say it's, no, no, it's no, no, but, no, but neither can Jonathan, and, well, Jonathan, that. but neither can somebody else have the argument. So you, you're saying that it's not whether that is used, you're talking about, you're saying that the use is based on the scope. Is that right? Yeah. That's what well, then I so so that it so that it, it doesn't anymore have to do with the use of the rule. You've now switched the argument to be the rule can only not be used if the scope exceeds some arbitrary barrier, right? Would you agree with that? Uh, no, it's not whether I would no, agree with it. I, I'm asking you whether your agreement to the previous scenario extends to the latter scenario. Well, no, I mean, if you look I'll at come back to you. Okay. We can you can you can think about that and we can yeah go ahead. Yeah, on the, just the, Sh the Schumer and the, uh, the China currency stuff, mm -hmm. um, Schumer and Graham said today it, was, it helps to put pressure on the Chinese like that. <clears throat> Do you guys agree that this congressional pressure helps go towards the goal the president's been very clear about, which is to have a more market-oriented appreciation of the one? Again, uh, I, not having uh, evaluated the legislation uh, or their proposal, uh, again, I, I think the president has been clear uh, recently. The president was clear with the Chinese in Beijing uh, about a, a market-oriented approach to their currency. Uh, so I, I think that... Uh, well, without getting into the specifics of the legislation, just, you know, the, the language, the body language from Capitol Hill, is that, is that helpful? Does the president think that helps well, look, with uh, leverage with the Chinese? I, I, look, I, I, think the, I think the most leverage that the president has is uh, sitting face-to-face -face with leaders in Beijing and telling them uh, that... Uh, a market-oriented approach to their currency, uh, I, I think that's a, about as much leverage as uh, one can bring to bear in a single sitting. So would you prefer that some of the rhetoric gets toned down from Capitol Hill? Uh, I, 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 I didn't pass judgment on uh, their proposal. Eric Cantor called Rahm Emanuel a couple of days ago, uh, asked him to tone down the, the rhetoric I think it was against, yesterday. Uh, against Israel. He said when you, when you uh, scold Israel, Basically, you take some of the pressure off the Palestinians to do their own negotiating. Do you disagree with that? Well, again, we, as I said, to, as I said earlier today, and as I said last week when asked about this, there are actions that each side uh, takes that hurt the trust needed to bring these two sides together. The State Department uh, reiterated, uh, or I will reiterate what the State Department said yesterday uh, about the deep concern that we have around inflammatory rhetoric around the rededication of a synagogue in Jerusalem. That's not helpful on that side of the ledger. Uh, again, Prime Minister Netanyahu has apologized and found regrettable uh, the timing of the decision uh, that was announced during the Vice President's trip. I think what is, what is important to understand, and I, I believe Congressman Cantor understands it, that despite a disagreement that you might have, our commitment to Israel's security is unchanged. Our commitment to its people is unchanged. The Vice President, the, the Vice President uh, reiterated that at the beginning of his trip. That was the reason for his trip. He reiterated that in a speech after the Prime Minister found uh, cause for regret. The Vice President reiterated our commitment to, uh, to Israel's security. Also on health care, in order to get the Senate bill through the House, if there is a, a specific vote, you're going to have to change uh, the minds of some of the 31 uh, Democrats who vote against the House bill in November. What gives you confidence that you can do that? What gives you confidence, <laughs> especially since there are a number of Democrats who voted in favor of the House bill who now say they can't support the Senate? On, on, oh. right, but uh, uh, based, you're, you're talking about a, a, somebody like a, a member who is more, uh, well, I'll say this. Uh, look, there are, I think there are those that, uh, that voted against the legislation for any number of reasons, not believing that uh, there was enough cost control in uh, in the legislation, or, or 
disagreeing with the mechanisms that were set up uh, around choice and competition, that they might, may find the Senate bill uh, more to their liking in terms of that. Uh, I, I think that, uh, um, again, I, I think the case that the president will make, I also think the case, one of the strong cases the president will make as we get to the end of this debate, I do think you, it becomes far more crystallized in, in people's minds that this is the last chance to do something. And what does our health care system look like if we do nothing? We know letters come with skyrocketing rate increases uh, on the individual market. Families will see over the course of the next several years, average premiums for a family go from $13,000 to $24,000. That's what happens if we walk away. Uh, and I think that in many ways is having uh, a positive effect on the idea of doing something now. Is that the case the President made to Dennis Uh I think that's probably part of the case that he made to him. And uh, then he was helped by uh, somebody in the crowd uh, uh, that the president asked uh, that person to repeat so uh, uh, the congressman could hear. Yes, sir. Robert, by your way of thinking, uh, at the end of, by the end of the week, Friday or Saturday, we'll have a vote and either health care will have passed or it will have failed. Is the president... I think that, just by the way, I think... I'm not going to go way out on a limb here, but I'm, I'm, I moderately believe most in the room would agree with that. Okay. So given that, is the president prepared then for his voice to be largely absent uh, in the week following that as the reverberations from whatever happens on, you know, one way or the other, <coughs> that he will be halfway around the world? Uh, you all will be asking him ad nauseum about Indonesia and Australia and democracy okay, over here and exports and yeah exactly I all the I uh, right I, I I we better get a, a, a much better Indonesia briefing for the president <laughs> yeah. but, but I mean you, 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 he's prepared to be there during that during that week well it, whichever way happens you're not thinking yes about and, I, and I'll say this Michael the, the, more seriously the when the president, as I said last week, when the president talked to the speaker and the majority leader, uh, while there was an agreement to, uh, to give both sides a few extra days of the president's time to help passage, the president was also, uh, the president and the leaders agreed also that of the importance of this trip. Um, I went through some of that reasoning last week. Uh, Indonesia is critical to uh, and we're critical to Indonesia in helping uh, on counterterrorism and in pro ultimately in protecting our country. Uh, the type of trading relationships that we have with these two countries and that we hope to expand with these two countries uh, help grow our economy. So it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is an important trip uh, that the president will take. Um, and, and I think he's, uh, he looks forward to it. Can I just follow up? Are, sure. there, are there people that you all are leaving behind um, that you would normally go, that you would normally take that trip but are, are staying here to deal with that week? And do you have any plans for the trip to make adjustments to, <coughs> to allow? <laughs> I hope the schedulers aren't watching. <laughs> uh, you, you, your scenario might uh, have caused some heart palpitations uh, in a certain few rooms. No, I, I, look, I. I uh, the vice president uh, will be obviously be here uh, as this next goes to the Senate, and I think obviously the president believes that's enormously important. Uh, I, I do believe that um, I, I'm not sure honestly whether some of the staff that will stay would necessarily have gone. Um, uh, hmm? I, I, I believe the chief of staff will be here, and I, I don't know that the chief of staff had plans. In fact, uh, certainly under the under the um, uh, under the previous trip schedule, uh, he was not he was not planning on going uh, for a whole host of commitments. Yeah. Uh, two things, Robert. It's Sunshine Week. 
and the president has. I noticed the beautiful weather. The beautiful sunshine outside. Coordinated the president by has, Ben uh, LeBolt in order has to uh, praised his administration yeah. for openness. So, in that spirit, I'm wondering if you will release in real time a list of the people that the president is talking to about health care this week. Uh, again, uh, the the president will will meet with uh, undecided members of the House, uh, meet with senators, uh, looking to uh, make the strongest case possible for uh, for health care reform. Uh, follow up. I'm taking that as a no. He you won't well, you won't be giving us the names of the people that he's talking to. We uh, we uh, I'm happy to sit in on. On some of your assignment meetings, just as I'm sure you would like to be the pool reporter for uh, uh, well, some of the know Oval Office. I'm working on, so <laughs> well, why can't it be? In that's uh, I, I'm going to make a joke. This video. No, 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 no. I, 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 you know, why not? Why not tell us who he's reaching out well, to? Well, Cheryl, I, I've, the I've read many of your stories, yeah. and I think you've narrowed down many of the people that the president is likely to see this week. Okay, and then as a follow on that, I mm -hmm. understand he's going to be um, on Fox News talking about health care reform, and the administration's tussles with Fox News are well known. So can you talk to us a little bit about why he's going on Fox now and what he thinks he can accomplish by it, is he <coughs> reaching out to their audience in particular, mm -hmm. et cetera? Well, look, I, I, obviously they have, uh, uh, they have a, a pretty big audience share, uh, and I think uh, it's safe to say that uh, a lot of members uh, that are undecided um, are going to be uh, they watch and their constituents watch this news. Uh, so we're we're happy to continue the argument on why health care reform uh, is important to pass this year uh, on Fox. Do you really think he's going to change the minds of Fox viewers, many of whom I suspect are opposed? It's certainly worth a shot. Um, yes, this may follow. You partially answered this, but. Israel claims over the years it's tried to protect holy sites, Christian, Muslim, and Jewish holy sites. Have you ever discussed this with the Palestinians and asked them to refrain from attacks on, on other people's holy sites? Uh, we have, I, I would say, uh, uh, taking this a little bit broader, uh, I would say the types of uh, the types of things that you've heard us and, quite frankly, administrations in the past discuss uh, as unhelpful to moving this process along uh, are, uh, is any call for the incitement of violence. Um, again, I mentioned the State Department, reiterated the State Department's guidance uh, on what we believed was an unhelpful rhetor rhetoric around the rededication of a synagogue in Jerusalem as a uh, real-time example of uh, the type of action and rhetoric that uh, is not in any way productive and uh, undermines the trust that's needed for both of these sides to sit down and directly address uh, their issues and move forward on peace. And to be precise on health care, when you talk about an up or down vote this week, you are talking about the Senate bill passing the House or a or being passed in some way by the House. <clears throat> would the President then sign that? How quickly could he sign it? And would he wait for secondary, the, the fixed legislation to come along? Um, I, I, as I understand this, that's a decision that will largely, uh, that will be governed largely by a decision by the parliamentarian uh, to, uh, that, that might require th that signature prior to the taking up of reconciliation. If that's, if that's as I understand it, uh, that's what the president would do. I will say this, and I said this over the weekend, the, the president has and is spending time talking with senators, um, understanding that, again, this is a two-step process, that they have, uh, they have a, a, a very important role to play, and the president has uh, and is continuing to work with the Senate uh, on uh, on their part of this as well. And if, if yeah. the Senate language, since it was passed last uh, December, is right. Would he be able to sign that right away? I'm sorry. The Senate language, yeah. if it goes to the House, would he be able to sign that right away, like before he wheels up on Sunday morning? I think that's 
this is a better question for uh, the House. Uh, the President would make himself available to do that, yes. If, if he was told he needed to by the parliamentarian. Yes. You're saying otherwise he would wait for the reconciliation. No, no, no. Again, I, 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 I'm going to, this is, I, I don't want to get into hypotheticals. Again, I, the answer, I, no, no, but the, the answer I outlined, let me, I, I think I can break this up and answer your question. The, the procedure I outlined is, as I understand, what the parliamentarian is either has decided or is likely to decide. Um, uh, what I was saying a minute ago on, on the second part pushing back is, I, I assume that bill can be gotten down here quickly, though. It, it's, uh, it will take some time to enroll and, and what have you. Uh, but, you know, if, if the president, if, if that process requires that the president sign that bill, uh, he'll be happy to do so prior to leaving. And, the president, and did the president so offer who, who sign it in this country now? Uh, again, I, I, this, a lot of this would depend first and foremost on the parliamentary uh, decision and secondly on the quickness with which uh, a bill can be enrolled and, uh, and moved down here. We've, it's only Tuesday. We've got plenty of time to, uh, to get it in. Did Tim Payne a job during lunch? Uh, I think he offered him salt. I, 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 I don't know. What, he has, I, I would say this. I would say that uh, he offered uh, Governor Kane a job uh, a few years ago, and he gladly accepted it, and he's doing a great job. Can, um, yeah. Just uh, one, one little housekeeping thing and then a substantive question on health care. Is he going to have another public event on health care this week, and what might it be? Uh, let me double-check with scheduling. I believe, uh, I believe he will... Uh, I believe he's likely to have um, at least one more, if not Here more than town. one, yeah. in town. Yes, we 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 we've got a lot of assets overseas. We're not uh, um, nobody would go and say we'd not, love to not, not fill not up the bird and go I somewhere. Did. Yeah, no, no. Even outside, even in the continental United States, I think um, they would look at us like we were crazy. In terms of um, your arguments about about this demon pass scenario, what you're kind of saying is this distinction is kind of silly because everybody is going to going to um, look at their votes as either for or against the health care bill. I, I, I think that's yeah, not I mean, how, that's, I'm not, I think that's not only how they'll look at it, I think how, quite honestly that's how you'll look yes, at it. Yes, absolutely. So what <laughs> okay. you're saying is it's kind of a, a, a silly exercise to pretend that you're not voting for the Senate bill and the Cornhusker kickback when you vote for the rule. Just as when you vote for the reconciliation that corrects that, you right. will have, there, have done that. Right. But, but so anybody who votes for the rule... Well, since those, I think, in this bill will be simultaneous, I, I'll leave to you and your editors how you would... Except for the reconciliation part won't be... No, the corrections, some of the corrections... Quite, a, quite, right. a, quite uh, many days after that. Maybe you've proved my earlier point. So, so, so Nancy Pelosi can't provide... <laughs> what you're saying is she can't provide any cover for her members to act as if they didn't vote for the Senate bill. Uh, again, I, I think the process... Mara, again, as I mentioned to Ann, is a, is a, is a two-step process, right? They're going to vote on legislation. They're going to vote on a series of corrections. The president will sign, uh, looks forward to signing all of that and reforming uh, our health care system. Mara? Thank you. Um, if, if or when the legislation passes, if it comes under the sort of cloud of controversy, very tight votes, criticism over the whatever. At what cost is that going to be to the president's ability to govern going forward and to the Democrats' position heading into the midterms? I understand it's a risk you're willing to take that uh, getting this Flesh out for me just a little bit. I, I don't, I, I didn't. If this passes, but it's ugly, right? If, this, if the health care overhaul becomes law, but there's a lot of bad feelings about it and all your Republican friends are mad at you and Jason Altmyers of the world don't feel good about it and all this sort of stuff, will it impair the president's ability to govern going forward, and to what extent? And, and, I, and with the yeah, caveat sorry. being that, from where you're coming from, it's better to have this than not to have this. Totally get it. But if yeah. it's sort of not clean and everyone's not happy at the end, look, I, I think that well, taking this in two separate ways. I, again, I think the president has made clear through his commitment the importance of getting this done. That having been said. We will wake up next week, next month, several months from now with many critical and important issues. Um, Senator Dodd introduced financial reform yesterday to put in place strong rules governing the way our financial system 
should work, that it, it didn't uh, 18 months ago when, the, when we watched uh, Wall Street collapse and the dreams of many in America collapse. That's an important issue that is going to be on the plates of legislators regardless of the outcome of health care. Uh, we've mentioned in here over the past several days the Supreme Court case around Citizens United that the president has uh, serious reservations about. Uh, in financial reform, we have, uh, the president has outlined a fee on banks to pay taxpayers back completely for the money that they lent uh, financial systems uh, through the TARP program. Regardless of the outcome of health care, those problems still exist and they have to be addressed uh, throughout the remainder of the year. I, I think that those are important issues, not just for Congress and for the administration, but I outline them as important issues for the American people. And I don't think that, I don't think that they want uh, that process to stop uh, because because uh, because of health care. As you look to build coalitions that you're going to need, both within the Congress and the goodwill of the American people, on all these issues, on financial <coughs> reform, on cap and trade, looking way, maybe way down the road now, um, what I'm saying is, do you think that your ability to get the votes that you need on those things and to have the goodwill you need on those things will be somehow impaired if, because of sort of the political cost of getting this big important thing. I, I honestly don't. I don't believe that's true. I, I, I don't. I, I. I don't think that's true either in Congress, and I certainly don't believe that's true on behalf of the American people. Uh, again, I, there are important problems that will exist. There will be important solutions that the American people will want to see their Congress act on. I cannot imagine that we want to celebrate the two-year anniversary of the collapse of our financial system because of reckless behavior by uh, announcing that we're not going to have new rules of the road going forward. Uh, I don't, and I think that, uh, I think that elections, I don't think anybody wants to go, I said this last week, I don't think people want to go home um, saying that those rules of the road haven't changed and it's, uh, we're back to the wild, wild west. I, I, I think that the American people, their constituents are not going to accept that a disagreement that was had in March affects your ability to uh, institute strong rules of the road on Wall Street uh, in, in September. Glenn? Rob, to okay. sort of follow up on that, um, mm -hmm. the SEIU had a poll uh, that was released yesterday that sort of talked about uh, the bad taste people have in terms of some of these process issues, you know, the Cornhusker kickback, and said that was actually more dangerous to the Democrats in the midterms than what was what was actually in the bill. And that comports with what we heard out of Massachusetts from voters who voted mm -hmm. for Scott Brown. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a very real danger, if not for the White House, but for Democrats on the Hill, uh, that the spinning of this, that, that deals, we've gotten this torrent of press releases from Republicans in the last two days, kickbacks, deals, this kind of talk, well, the, harms, again, harms. Again, the Democrats. one you mentioned specifically is the yeah. one the President specifically has taken out of the legislation. Uh, I, I don't think you would, I don't think the president would disagree that the process that ended late last year didn't affect the way people viewed the product at the beginning of this year. That's why the president has uh, asked that that type of stuff be taken out. That's why the president has um, engaged Republicans and Democrats alike in a process that uh, puts the focus back on what the legislation does for the American people. I do think that the rate increases by the insurance companies have had a galvanizing effect uh, in letting people know what happens again if we walk away. Is this perception, though, that you were talking about last year into this year, is that informing these conversations you're having with undecided members? I mean, if they're coming to you and asking for specific things, is the president now more likely to say, no, I'm not willing to make those kinds of deals? Well, again, I, the president's making the case based on the legislation. Uh, uh, and I think the process that the president has been engaged in over the past several months uh, has in many ways been to uh, clean up where that process went wrong at the end of last year. David? Is it, uh, this I, I, I should. 
Just a clarification on the Fox News thing. He's going on with Brett Baer. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be live? Uh, likely taped. Today? Uh, tomorrow. Um, David. On financial reform, <laughs> Yeah. On financial reform, uh, the president's met recently a few times, I believe, with Jamie Dimon. Has he asked him and other executives to ease up on their opposition to having a consumer financial protection agency? And also, I'll, I'll do two at once here, has, mm -hmm. has Larry Summers and Tim Geithner been brought in to talk to their former Wall Street colleagues about their opposition to having such a bureau or agency? Right. Well, I say this. The, the, the president used the occasion of them being here uh, last year on small business lending uh, to talk about not only the Consumer Financial uh, Protection Agency, but also uh, overall financial reform. We, we believe it is in uh, the interest of the American people, bless you, to set rules of the road uh, to give, to empower consumers with the information they need uh, and to do so in a way that doesn't carve out certain lenders like payday lenders or things like that in, in, protecting, uh, in protecting consumers. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that, uh, I don't know whether Larry and Tim have talked with anybody on Wall Street in the past 24 hours since Senator Dodd introduces legislation. I do know that 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 the NEC and the Treasury Department were uh, were indeed working with uh, and have been working with Senator Dodd uh, over the past many weeks uh, on uh, on the legislation that uh, that he introduced yesterday. You do know there's a tremendous lobbying effort on the part of banks and other Wall Street firms oh, targeting this. Absolutely. I mean, as, as, yeah. you know, will the president, you know, continue to sort of try to beat that back. The president, I think you saw in his statement, is committed to, uh, is committed to a strong uh, consumer agency. Uh, he will seek opportunities as it relates to the overall bill to strengthen it um, and will fight, as he said yesterday, any effort to weaken uh, the legislation that he believes uh, again, provides very clear common sense rules of the road so that the American people are never on the hook for the excesses of uh, Wall Street banks. April. Robert, um, talk, uh, I want to ask you a question about trade-offs for the health care uh, reform bill. Um, HBCUs are saying that they got word from Hill leaders last week that funding, $2 billion worth of funding for HBCUs over 10 years was on the chopping block and it was put back in uh, yesterday. Now there's a concern that this president uh, put all this money in, had this big ceremony to help fund HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, right. and the money I was up. Tuskegee being a threat. Morgan State, right. yeah, Hampton. Okay. Anyway, um, Howard. Um, <laughs> but going back, <laughs> going, going back to the issue, um, they are concerned that if it was able to linger and be on the chopping block once, what's to say it's not going to happen in the next few days before a vote? I, 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 I get where you're going. I don't. I don't. I guess I'm. I'm lost on the. Why? I'm lost on the. What you said. Why it was on the chopping block. Yeah why it was added back in and why it wouldn't. The Hill leaders were saying that they had to shave some money for reconciliation, and that was one of the, the areas that they tried to shave, HBCU money that the president is definitely, he said he was standing by, and he even reiterated that to the CBC. Let, 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 me, uh, let, me, let me get DPC to look into. I, I just don't have enough uh, on, the, uh, on the HBCU process of this. But does this president stand by HBCUs and the funding that he that he put in? Absolutely. And would he stand up to these lawmakers? Well, again, lawmakers? Let, let me, I, I want to get, obviously the president is supportive of historically black colleges and universities. Uh, around the specific instance that you mentioned, uh, I, I, let me get some guidance from, from DPC. Bill? Uh, Robert, perhaps a sore point, but uh, Congressman Darrell Issa has accused you, Robert Gibbs, of being part of a cover-up because you will not say whether the White House offered Joe Sestak a job for not, not running against uh, uh, Arlen Specter. Uh, guilty or not guilty? No. I, I, look, I, I've, I've talked to, to several people in the White House. Uh, I've talked to people that have talked to others in the White House. Uh, I'm told that whatever conversations uh, have been had 
uh, are not problematic. I think Congressman Sestak has uh, discussed uh, that uh, this is whatever happened is in the past, and he's focused on his primary election. Did Stephen? I, I'd re refer you to my, my previous lines. Yep. I, I, I refer you to what I just said a minute ago. Stephen? Are there any plans for anyone from the administration to meet uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu next week while he's in town for APAC? Uh, let me, the president's away, but the vice president right, might be around. We're uh, obviously away uh, while they're here. Uh, I will check with, uh, with NSC and see whether, uh, whether it's the vice president or whether others on the... Uh, uh, in the administration. Yep. Uh, about the relationship with the Turkish administration, Turkey recalled its ambassador two weeks ago uh, because of the genocide resolution passed. And Turkish Prime Minister said last week that unless they see some steps taken uh, by the U.S. administration, <coughs> Turkey is not going to send its ambassador back. So my question is, uh, absence of the Turkish ambassador in Washington is a matter of concern for the U.S. administration. And second, uh, are there any steps being taken by the U.S. administration to yeah. assure Turkish administration? Let, let me, on the second part, let me, uh, let me check with, uh, with uh, the NSC on that. Obviously, uh, we believe that uh, uh, Turkey is a valuable uh, partner. Uh, the president traveled there uh, on one of his first trips uh, abroad to demonstrate the importance of that partnership. Uh, on that trip, uh, worked uh, on a process uh, that has now resulted in, uh, or in, resulted in the announcement of uh, more normalized relations pending uh, parliament passage of protocols, uh, and uh, we're certainly hopeful uh, that that will happen. Thanks, guys. Thank you.